Hey everybody, Rob Mauer here, and today we've got a couple more updates on the Cybertruck. We also have news on FSD beta, an update from NHTSA on the status of Tesla's autopilot investigation, and a few other items as well. Looking at the markets quickly, the reaction to NVIDIA earnings was pretty short-lived. The Nasdaq today down 1.9%, Tesla down 2.9% to close at $230.04, and even NVIDIA, despite the beat, basically finishing flat today. So, good thing they didn't miss. Seemed like some of the Fed comments already out of Jackson Hole are starting to maybe impact the market, and that will continue into tomorrow as Fed Chair Jerome Powell comments as well. All right, we've got another day here with a handful of Cybertruck updates. First is a continuation of the images that we talked about from Reddit yesterday. I hadn't noticed at the time, but a couple more details seem to be coming through from those photos. The first of which, unless there's some really weird reflections happening here and really consistent reflections happening here, there seems to be some ambient lighting on the interior of the Cybertruck. As we can see these straight red lines across the dash and around the perimeter of the interior. So this seems to be a new detail. I'll withhold judgment for now because I think like with all things Cybertruck, it's difficult to get a sense for how this really feels in person just from the pictures alone, but always fun to see some new features. And then the other thing that people are speculating on seeing from these images is if we look at the center display, people are saying that that might show a view of the front bumper camera, which of course we've seen the hardware for previously, but have never seen the video feed from that, let alone seeing that on the center screen. If we look very closely at this, if we zoom in, we can see that the car that is on the display here, we're seeing the taillights of it. That gives an indication that this car is positioned in front of the Cybertruck rather than behind because parking rear bumper to rear bumper would be pretty unusual, at least for street parking, which if we very quickly flip back to the first image, we can see that the Cybertruck here is street parked. We can also see the front bumper of a white car behind the Cybertruck. So unless this moves significantly, that sort of setup would seem very unlikely. Furthermore, if we go back to that zoomed in image, we can see what seems to be a little gray or silver sedan off to the right, which matches the car and importantly, the orientation of the car that we can see through the front windshield, which if this were a rear camera would also be a very strange orientation for these cars to be in. So in my opinion, it looks pretty conclusively like this is the front bumper camera. And although obviously the photo here is pixelated, it does look to be pretty good quality from at least what we can tell. So a couple of exciting things here. Let me know if you're picking up on anything else and sorry for missing those the first time around yesterday. Just had a minute to briefly look at those before the stream was starting. A few more things on Cybertruck today. First, we do have a video again from Reddit from Rambo Trucker, which gives us a good view of how the tail lights, the brake lights, turn signals are gonna work. I will say from the video, it looks like this could be at least a little bit confusing because during non-braking, you've got the whole entire red light strip lit up. And then during braking, you actually have less of it lit up. But you do, of course, then get the tail lights and you get the three distinct brake lights that are required. But it does seem a little bit unintuitive, though again, because this is a video, it might not do a great job of giving us the full impact of what this seems like in reality. Maybe those three lights are much brighter, which completely changes things, and all of a sudden it looks completely normal and intuitive and fine. So definitely something that I'll be curious to see, but not something that I'm going to overreact to right now. Also kind of interesting that that straight red light for the non-braking view does kind of match what we're seeing in the interior lights with those straight red lines from those previous photos. The final new image today seems to come from the factory floor directly. It's a side shot of the vehicle frame with the interior pretty much fully installed, but in this case, a little bit of an upward angle. So we get a better shot of the windshield and how far back that extends. You can see the sun visors there. Not sure how good of a look we've gotten at those previously. You can see the metal pedals the glove box area, seat risers, you can see the controls for the seating position, although we have seen those previously. But overall, a pretty good look and a new perspective of the interior. We also talked yesterday about the delivery event invite being added to the referral program. No date on that yet, but an interesting update here from Brooks of Drag Times, reposting this on Instagram and saying, who's going? I'll take delivery of mine at the event. Now, obviously could just be joking around here, but if this is accurate, would definitely add some credence to the rumors that we talked yesterday about regarding some customers having been informed to start preparing for delivery. I wouldn't quite take this as confirmation yet, but interesting to see and we'll keep an eye out if anyone else shares a similar comment. Lastly, on the Cybertruck then, Jeff Roberts drone flyer video of Giga Texas spotted seven different Cybertrucks at Giga Texas today. So it again, kind of tracks with that, you know, five or 10 vehicle production rate that seems to have been roughly what we've been seeing over the last few days. Obviously, some of those could end up being duplicates, so it does make it a little bit difficult to tell, so worth keeping that in mind as well. All right, moving on, a couple quick notes on FSD. Looks like version 11.4.7 has started to roll out to some employees, and Holmars has posted the release notes for this version. 
the release notes are still the same as 11.4.6, so we won't go through them since we have done that previously. Hopefully though, this means that we'll see that rollout brought in pretty soon. Unfortunately, it does look like this is still on the same branch as the older other software, non-FSD software, so it looks like we'll have to wait longer for that merge to happen. And then on FSD beta version 12, of course, last week Elon said that he hoped to do a live stream of version 12 in action next week, which would be this week. Dirty Tesla on X asking for an update on that, and Elon said that he might be able to squeeze that in tomorrow. Would be cool. At the same time, though, I think there's only so much we'll be able to learn from one FSD drive if it were to happen. Now, of course, if there is some next level maneuvering in that live stream by chance, then that would be awesome, but... I think even with version 12, it's still going to take Tesla a lot of time to iterate beyond that, so I'm setting my expectations accordingly. Next, we've got a report from Reuters on NHTSA comments on their investigation that has been ongoing for a long time on Autopilot. They say that they are going to resolve this investigation and could be making an announcement soon, although she declined to discuss how the investigation might be resolved, but said, quote, hopefully you'll hear something relatively soon, end quote. So this relates to autopilot safety in general, and particularly there seemed to be a focus on driver monitoring, which obviously has evolved for Tesla over the last couple of years, and I'm sure that has evolved in part with conversations with NHTSA. So hopefully this resolution is nothing too crazy or nothing too unexpected. It'll be nice to have sort of the official investigation closed, presuming that the resolution isn't anything crazy. But obviously NHTSA, whether they're technically investigating or not, is always going to continue to monitor the progress from Tesla as they should, definitely a part of the job. So we'll keep an eye out for that. And then next we've got an update from Tesla Roddy on Tesla's drive-in diner slash movie theater supercharging location in Los Angeles. Tesla Roddy has learned that Tesla received approval for their permits on this on July 18th, so last month. And then earlier this month, Tesla Roddy says the initial grading inspection was completed and approved. So we should be seeing more from Tesla on this relatively soon. Obviously kind of a novel concept. It'll be interesting to watch develop. And if Tesla kind of keeps that as a fun one-off or some of those ideas make their way into some projects more broadly. All right, last few things. The Folsom Police Department in California has decided to add two Teslas to their police vehicle fleet. Always nice to see those additions continue. And then Ford has announced a special matte black version of the F-150 Lightning. It'll cost around $100,000. I think they're only going to make a couple thousand of these, but it looks pretty cool and interesting to see Ford emphasizing the Lightning around this time especially with that kind of a look, as we hear more and more about Cybertruck. And then lastly, we won't spend a ton of time on this, but the Department of Justice is filing a lawsuit against SpaceX, claiming there has been hiring discrimination against refugees and asylees from late 2018 to mid-2022. Now, of course, with the type of business that SpaceX is involved in and sometimes the defense-related nature of those businesses, SpaceX obviously has to account for those things in their hiring process, so my interpretation of the situation here without doing a ton of research on it is that SpaceX was probably overcautious to the letter of the law, which given the work, I think seems hard to fault, but nevertheless, fault taken with it here. So we'll keep an eye on what comes of that, but those are my initial thoughts. All right, that is it for today then. So as always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and sign up for notifications. You can also find me on X at Tesla Podcast, and we'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, August 25th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you. Thank you.